Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Vivo Barefoot Mega Shoe Review. I'm going to show you how I've set up Vivo Barefoots to replace all the footwear I need from the hot summers to the icy cold winters. Uh, Vivo kind of uh, provides any type of terrain and weather condition. I have some water resistant boots, some uh, aqua shoes, sandals, hybrid and some more fashionably conscious um, dressy-ish type shoes that won't be getting any stairs like some of your other barefoot shoes. So these are some of Vivo Barefoot's uh, best shoes that I have purchased and I have dedicated reviews for each one of these shoes, boots, and aqua shoes, slip-on sandals here. Uh, have their own dedicated review on my channel that I have linked in the description if you are interested in any of them to see a more in-depth view of what's going on. Overall, Vivo is a high-quality, high-price point shoe with some good eco-friendly uh, standards in their company. So, we're going to go through each one of the shoes and a kind of scenario that they would be good for. So imagine yourself now in a nice warm summer day. You just want to take a casual stroll. What kind of shoe would you want to take? You would want to take the Vivo Ultra 3s to replace any kind of uh, sandal or slip-on shoe because these are uh, no fuss, uh, no mess at all. You just slip them on. You don't need socks. Uh, you don't even need it to be dry outside. It could even be raining. It could be muddy. These are uh, waterproof. These are an aqua shoe themselves. And you can get two colors for two kind of vibes. This is kind of a more, more versatile. This is more stylish. So right now, we're not going anywhere fancy. No dinners. We're just going to slip on these casual shoes. No problem. No hands-free, socks-free then you can just go out the door. So you could take these shoes through a leisure walk through the town and replace of uh, your sandals, your Crocs, uh, even your sneakers because they kind of have that look. So you can take them through in nature to get that excellent ground feel. And oh no, you, if you were wearing some thong sandals and you needed to do something athletic like a slack line, the infamous slack line test, you can put these bad boys into a sports mode. Just put up the heel. It also slightly more fashionable, but it does take some amount of uh, the hands free, the leisure out of it and just slipping them on. So with these nice and compatible barefoot shoes that could be that are waterproof, you can wear these in the in the like in a river, walk through them, and they have plenty of ground feel that you can do a slack line without any problems. Hopefully, without any problems. So just to show that the Ultra Threes are. Water, I mean, they're aqua shoes. There's really no problem. Just a little, you can pour the water on them. You just give them a little shake. They do catch a little bit of water that the, uh, the holes here come up about halfway into the foot. So if you step into a puddle, they're not going to uh, enter these uh, perforations here until the puddle gets up about halfway, a little above your arch. So you can see that, I mean, it, it does hold, like there's like lift up the, sh the shoe here. And if you do here, you have this much of water that you could have stepped in without getting in the shoe, but pour it on top, like in the rain or something. They're gonna fill up the shoes. But if you're into barefoot and all that, uh, it should be a nice, uh, nice sensation. So that was the casual uh, replacement of some sandals. Uh, maybe even some sneakers. So let's get on to a maybe a more classier 
fancier, uh, fashionable scenario. So for the next scenario is more of a fashion conscious, fashion conscious shoe, which is the Vivo Addis shoes, which are the most uh, inconspicuous, least uh, eye-catching of all the Vivo barefoot shoes, while still giving you most of the benefits that you're really going to want. Uh, none of the, all of, none of the barefoot shoes here are completely wide enough for the widest of feet, but they are more than adequate enough for starting off into barefoot shoes. So I'm going to put these uh, classy guys on right here and show you what they might look like. Now, if you really want to step it up a notch, uh, this is a secret. Don't let people see them, but toe socks will help increase your pedial function whilst making you look like an absolute um, freak, weirdo. So don't wear them to an airport where you have to, they might be seen by mortal eyes. These are your, yours and mine. Cheeky little secret for athletic ability. So they go on. Now, my personal style and outfits do not um, really work for a sleek shoe because I like wearing uh, baggy clothes because they have better freedom of movement and baggy clothes work better with chunkier shoes and these, I mean, they're slim, but they're also clown shoes. So given what they are, these are the most fashionably fashion forward options you can get. They're really quite comfortable, really grippy. This is if you're going out on a night dancing, going out for dinner, these shoes are great. The uh, faux leather on them makes them easy to clean if you're uh, walking around on the town, getting grime on them easily comes off, easily wiped off. And they look good enough. Very grippy for uh, wet club floors. They will you will not slide around, and even if people spill their drinks on your shoes, they're easy to clean. So I will see you in the next scenario. Well, as you can see, it's more of a go for a classy-ish as you can be with. Uh, barefoot shoes so make sure you get the shoes and the whole outfit going this is probably as best as I can make them look with my current wardrobe here they are really these shoes are really grippy you can feel the ground uh, but the grip kind of overwhelms it I think they look all right for what they'll be used for which should just be to dress up the appearance and, you know, how freaky do they look with it? I think they look all right. So if you're just chilling out on the town, driving around. They do make good driving shoes because of the uh, back heel with the little Africa print. Uh, they work pretty well for driving shoes. So... The, the fun you'll have in these shoes are pretty much the fun you'll have in the event while still being able to maintain somewhat decent pedial health, uh, your toe spread and your zero drop and ground feel and all that. If you need to bust out into some uh, athletic, <laughs> I don't know if uh, I've never really busted out in a Street Fighter S fight, but maybe you do. Maybe you live a much cooler life than me. So, uh, this is more of the fun, casual, but what if it gets rainy? What if it gets snowy? What if you really need to 
pull out some work while sticking with uh, Vivo Barefoots. And I'll show you what the uh, waterproof and tough, rugged boot can do. Hello, all right. Now it is raining. It is snowing. It's thundering. It's lightning. You know, rain or shine, mud. Um, not really for like construction or that kind of stuff, but we're getting into the boots for cold weather, wet weather, um, hiking, uh, you know, some gardening work around the house. You could really get into some tracker twos. Uh, they're the waterproof barefoot style boot. They're, you know, painless enough to slip on. You're getting a lot more uh, toe room than a conventional boot. But still, uh, it leaves a little bit to be desired in the toe room. Not only around the pinky, but all the toes. I think this toe box is the smallest out of all of the Vivos. But it is one of the best boots I've had. Uh, is the best boot I have when it comes to being waterproof, being barefoot style. And overall leading to that good grip and ground feel. So let's see what it looks like out in the weather. So we're out here in the woods for a nice hike. It's raining, it's wet, but my shoes will stay dry. You're gonna have a good amount of ground feel. Uh, the shoes are a little tight, but you know, when it comes to boots, you actually might be the kind of boot you want it to be tight or the type of footwear where you want it to be tight. Cause like a rock climbing shoe that's extremely tight, your foot is, it's more able to, you know, hook into things and to wedge itself like on an incline. So think of like a rock climbing shoe that's very tight and that's what makes it good to be somewhat of a crushed toe design. But, you know, you're going to be waterproof up to about the shin, uh, about the mid shin. You're going to have a good amount of traction, but the, the barefoot style of shoe um, will really allow you to be more safe when you're moving around and, you know, hiking terrain anything like that you get a good ground feel and it has this one has a rubber sole a nice tread pattern to it and it even has like a some cushion like the the perfect amount of cushion i'd say uh so that you can walk and not really take too much impact that you might be in you know like a zero drop shoe this has like a slight cushion which is like the perfect amount so you can still be supported into the wet into the hikingness into the nature and still feel all safe it is not a steel toe design so don't wear this for construction but garden work any kind of climbing you will be, you know, you'll be happy you have this kind of shoe and the barefoot. Your toes won't get crushed. You really feel like the uh, wilderness explorer that your inner child might like to be. So normally I would do a slack line test, but I'm gonna do a little bit more improvised uh, nature test. We're going so I'm gonna do a little bit of a run. The shoes do have a good uh, high top design. So they're gonna give you ankle support, which might impede your running, but it does give you better grip and slip resistance where you can still run, but the ankle support 
isn't best for running. But what is good is that the tightness in the shoe does allow you to take some some gradient. You can walk on the you can walk up a hill, down a hill. Take these kind of slanted approaches, and you'll still be uh, very. It'll be even better than barefoot itself because the shoe has more grip than your feet, and your foot is locked in to this shoe. So the shoe is a little tighter, but that's for the use that this will be for outside hiking. You know, gardening work where you'll want a little tighter shoe so that you do not slide around. So I went through in the rain, and you can see that I am wet. If you look in on the shoes here, zoom in. They're wet, but I myself am not wet. I feel perfectly dry. So these shoes are really good for the rain, for the snow, uh, weather shoes, and you'll always have good. Uh, here is the tread. If you want to look at it, I do do a better review on the dedicated video if you want to see uh, more on these shoes. And let's get into the recap. So now that you've seen all the shoes uh, in action and their uses, uh, you can see each one of the shoe reviews uh, individually. I have an in-depth shoe review for each one of the shoes here, but let's just go over the top three that I would say you need to replace your whole uh, foot wear with a uh, barefoot style shoe. You get the uh, tracker twos for your outdoor weather, cold weather shoes, mud, rain, shine. These are the ultra threes that you'll be really your casual sandal shoe hybrid. Uh, they kind of fit that role if you can rock them for style. And then you have your more formal Addis, uh, your more inconspicuous, uh, fashionably conscious uh, shoe review. So let me know. Do you think I'm missing any uh, common scenario that you would need shoes for? Did I miss anything? Uh, let me know in the comments and I will try to reply or maybe I'll update it if you think I missed anything. Thank you for watching. Um, uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.